My name is Jeff Jensen. Uh, I'm working with team members Rick Schmidt and Chris Bacher on a project involving the iRobot Create. This project was uh, started from Class EE 124 at UC Berkeley in Embedded Systems. And basically our idea is distributed mapping, something similar to the Mars Rover project but with many robots. We're actually working with the iRobot Create to be able to use a distributed network of them. Um, right now it's in the very early stages, which is why you don't see any mapping or behavior actually going on on the, the laptop. But uh, in, a few, uh, in a few stages um, down the road, a few developments later, these robots will actually work in a distributed network. We'll have four or more of them go through a room and communicate their information back to the server. The interesting um, part, which is just in theory right now, but what we'll be designing in the next couple of weeks, is a localization schema, such that the robots can begin in a room where they know nothing about, nor do they know the positions of even themselves. And it's comparable to the idea of being in a cave, and not being able to hear, and trying to locate where your friends are. So these robots will actually have lasers mounted on the front of them, and laser receiving columns in the center of them. And by turning on a laser on one of the robots, rotating it around, and determining when the laser hits the other robots, we can actually triangulate their positions and know exactly where they are in the room. And once that happens, we can then begin to map. So that's our idea. That's our project. And uh, it's something we look forward to seeing come to fruition. OK, so you'll see initially they'll do their calibration stage. You'll see communications and primary console messages appear in here. You can actually just scroll through here to look at the communications that come from each of the robots. We now move into the localization phase. And based on those timestamps, we can figure out the angles between all the robots. This one will actually orient itself, pointing to the first robot. The next robot will then rotate to find angles between itself and the uh, other robots. And at this stage, we would then, uh, you can see we've actually lined these guys up towards north. And this is a stage where we would continue on to have one of them move a fixed di distance, which allows us to uh, determine uh, distances between all the robots. And that actually is all we need to do to localize. Uh, this same schema can continue um, inefficiently by iterating through all the robots if you have more than three. Um, or you can uh, do some more uh, complicated mathematical analysis, which has been done for time of flight kinds of things, uh, and looking at it in higher dimensional space. But that's the general idea behind our project. My name is Jeff Jensen. My, my uh, lab partner for this project is Christian Langbeck. This is a project for EE124 at UC Berkeley, a class on embedded systems. And the goal is to interface this accelerometer, the three-axis accelerometer, to the iRobot Create and be able to get the robot to climb a hill on its own. We'll see we have the robot here. The chip has been connected in. And the design is to have the robot rotate 360 degrees trying to figure out which way is up. After it does the rotation, it will orient itself towards the top and climb. If it does happen to hit the side or go off of a cliff sensor, it should be able to back up and correct its orientation after that happens. So we'll do a test of that now. So this is its uh, orientation phase. It's rotating 360 degrees to find which way is up, points up, and drives. And when it gets to the top, it stops. So now we can bounce it and we can move it back and forth. So now I'll go backwards. And now I'll move it forwards. And we can also turn. We have to turn a little increments in order, in order to enable it to, uh, the controller to uh, react in time. Um, it, Sort of. Yeah, sort of, for a little while, and then decides it's going to move somewhere. But that's not bad. <laughs> that's why the, the human control comes in handy. Oh, yeah, let's, let's show the... Um, so we were playing around last night, and we thought this would be really cool to show off. Um, well, let's see if we can do this. I don't know. I'm not, we're not sure if we can... Oh, okay. Nice. Okay, cool. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Luckily, we also installed an emergency shutoff switch. Yeah. Actually, let it go back down a little bit. 
down the ramp. <laughs> Wait, let's just stop in one place for a sec. Wait, so I just stop for a sec? Yeah, now let it go back down the ramp. Oh, a little too much. And now it can, it can climb the ramp pretty easily. Ah. <laughs> That's where you see the pictures. <laughs> this, 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 this is what happened quite often. Yeah, so it was about to fall off edges. Yeah, we were working on carpet, and uh, it does not very, it doesn't work very well on carpet, so we all have to Oops, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So that's uh, a, yeah. so we say goodbye. Thank you. Our project is called Handwavy Tech, and our goal is to kind of make a mouse 2.0. It's a new human interface device, and what it does is it allows you to use hand gestures, and um, yeah, basically hand gestures to manipulate the cursor and uh, interact with the computer. So um, currently, we're using an infrared camera, which is supplied by the Wiimote. The Wiimote has a lot of cool things in it. Um, the parts that we're using is the infrared camera built in with onboard processing. There's a Pixar chip. Basically what it does is um, it takes a relative position of any infrared beacons in its field of view and changes it into a 10-bit number, both X and Y. Well, we take that data, which is transmitted by Bluetooth, and then convert it through an algorithm into a pixel value so that we can place a cursor wherever we want on the screen. And so um, one of our project partners created Pong. This is a uh, custom-made application in a Microsoft XNA game studio. Um, he did all the graphics and everything. And uh, Mark can show that this is, if you want to come in real quick, this is Mark. This is our prototype, actually. It has um, two infrared beacons on a index finger and thumb and uh, a switch, just turn it on and off. Uh, as a basic milestone one, we have two beacons working. The first beacon can control the cursor movement, second beacon's for clicking. And so, if Mark turns it on right now, he can actually play Pong with uh, his hand. Uh, so basically the errors that you see occur when um, the LEDs are at the extremes of the depth of field, because what happens is um, there's a lot of stuttering that's going on, the sensor is really sensitive. It's sampling 100 times a second. And once in a while, actually quite fast enough, it'll error out. And we try to do a lot of error correction, kind of catching cases and handling. But um, as you can see, it's pretty easy to trick up if you kind of don't stand in front of it. So as you can see right now, I can control it fine. I'm the left-hand player. I can rotate and uh, move up and down. So this is the ebook reader, and uh, we display two pages and uh, at, a, at, a, at a time, and we can move in the prototype to turn the page left and right. And now there, now we only have three pages for the book, but. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just a proof of concept. Yeah. You can imagine hundreds of pages and cooler graphics, but. The next demo kind of shows more. So what Mark did was um, he loaded about six or seven gestures into the uh, NASA whirlwind, and that allows you to manipulate the globe um, instead of just using a mouse, using gestures. Um, some of the capabilities are zooming in, zooming out, uh, rolling left, rolling right. Um, he can also tilt the globe in, uh, in either direction. So you can imagine just kind of abstracting this, adding more functionality, Turning this into minority report, kind of zooming in, zooming out. Oh, there you are. He's, you know, chasing a car. <laughs> Absolutely, you can do multi-touch for sure. Um, we just didn't implement this functionality right now because we we split our time up across a bunch of demos, and each one had their own issues. But multi-touch, definitely not an issue. It's just the developer's creativity. We have three conditions. One is when hunters avoid each other. One is when a hunter chases prey, and one is when the uh, prey flees from the hunter. And once the blue one gets out of range again, it stops chasing. The AI is not very advanced. It's chasing. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> So it's a demonstration of uh, controlling the iRobot using the acceleration readings. Um, so you can see the acceleration readings over here. And now I'll show how it moves forward if you, you point forward. 
and then depending on the the row of the Wiimote it, it rotates and if I point up it it stops slowly because of the wall pass filter otherwise it will just hang it <laughs> right there and it will jump um, now there is also we can make it move backwards if, if you press button B it starts going back Okay, so this is the uh, gesture recognition. You see here that there's the red dot. The red dot corresponds to where I'm currently pointing to. Uh, so here, let's just draw. So there you see there's a C. It's pretty clean, and the iRobot draws a C.